Hi everyone and welcome to some Mr. FPGA news. This week we will be talking about some new FPGA hardware on the horizon, the rapid pace of the Nintendo 64 core, updates to the Saturn core, a Mr. FPGA mobile app, and more. So let's get to it. New FPGA hardware dedicated to retro gaming has been announced. It's called Mars FPGA and it offers benefits over the DE10 Nano. Since this device was developed from the ground up for gaming, it has several features built in that will make it easier to get set up. Here are some of the specs. There are 176,000 logic elements, 172,000 XLR cells, 1GB DDR4 RAM, 128MB of SD RAM, 8MB of PS RAM, an I2S digital to analog converter, JAMA is integrated, there's support for 4 player snack, 4K at 60Hz output, Analog output is also included in the PCB. There's support for HDR, VRR, 1440p at 120Hz, and more. This board will be better able to handle games and hardware that the D10 Nano will struggle with or may not be able to support at all. One of the most interesting aspects that should help this board get support from developers is that the porting process should be easy. Core developer Pramod says this, There is no porting. It should work with current cores as is. Just build for different target, but the Verilog is the same. What does this mean for the current Mr. FPGA? I don't think it means anything. It is still a great device, and if you already have one, you can still do a lot with it. If you already own a DE10 Nano, a decision to upgrade to the Mars FPGA should be made depending on what games it can run that the DE10 Nano can't. And to find that out, we will have to wait until the developers get these in their hands and start creating cores that take advantage of the Mars FPGA. And if you don't currently own an FPGA, I still think the D10 Nano should be something that you should consider, depending on the type of games you want to run. Take a look at what can currently run on the D10 Nano, and if you're satisfied with what it's currently capable of, then by all means stick with the D10 Nano because it will be a lower price. I haven't seen a confirmed price for the Mars FPGA yet, all I've seen were rumors so I don't want to speculate on them yet but all the tech that will be in the Mars FPGA will not come cheap. But once we get more information on what Mars FPGA can run over the DE10 Nano, then that would be a great time to make a decision to see if the Mars FPGA is for you. Mars FPGA is not the only new FPGA hardware coming out soon. Antonio Villena announced that on September 1st, he will be releasing the ZX3. There will be three FPGA sizes one with 35,000 logic cells, another with 100,000, which is around the same size as a DE10 Nano, and another with 200,000. Other features include 2 megabyte SRAM, 64 megabyte SD RAM at 166 megahertz, analog I2S sound, display port, and much more features. Pricing begins at 150 euros, which I assume is for the board with 35,000 cells. I do have some concerns about porting Mr. FPGA cores to these boards, and hopefully it will be as easy as Mars FPGA. Thanks to a supporter, Pierco has received a board that will help him decode PAL dumps for Super Off-Road. The game is still really early in the development process, so it's going to be some time before we get a core. Otego's team recently extracted the schematics for the sound module of the X-Men arcade game. Apparently, they have not been published before, so it's great to have these preserved now. Otego has released a new beta core for MIA, the sequel to Russian Attack or Green Beret. The PCB was very similar to the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles PCB, and these similarities helped with core development. Also regarding the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles core, Otego fixed a shadow bug that was occurring in it. The Nintendo 64 core has been getting updated at a rapid pace and is looking really good. The improvements in graphics have been significant, and games are starting to look as they should. This video shows how amazing things are currently looking. My jaw drops every single update Robert makes to the core. Also, if you have 4 original Nintendo 64 controllers, developer Blue One has added experimental 4 player snack support. Mr. Addons is currently developing a PCB dedicated to this. With the news of Mortal Kombat and NARC needing dual RAM, I thought viewers would be interested in LaserBear's Direct Video Adapter for Component. Direct Video allows you to use analog video output through the HDMI port. A regular Direct Video Adapter will work as is, 
if you plan on using RGB. However, if you want to use component, a sync on green circuit needs to be soldered to the adapter. If you're uncomfortable soldering your own adapter, then LaserBear has you covered. They will be selling adapters with built-in component ports and the sync on green circuit already built in, so you will not need to solder your own. At the moment, the adapter is in the pre-order phase. And there's another update to the Saturn core. There are SCU fixes that affected SimCity 2000 and Contra, VDP-1 fixes that affected Cyber Troopers, Thunder Force 4, and NHL 98. There are fixes to VDP-2, which helped Sonic R and Dudon Patchy. There was an SCSP fix that affected DEFCON 5, and an SMCP fix that added support for time optimization. This affected the game loaded. Pramod posted a video showing the progress for the NART core. It shows that you can get in the game and start playing, but the graphics right now are very glitchy, and Prabhat mentioned that he's still working on the DMA pixel modes. It is also mentioned that a lot of the artifacts are due to scanline auto erasure being disabled because of more SD RAM hits. The next game for the Mr. FPGA Discord game challenge is Girls Garden for the SG-1000. This game will go until September 8th and all scores should be submitted to the Mr. FPGA Discord. If you are using Wizzle's NFC script to run games using NFC cards and it's not working for you, it might be because you have a clone of the supported NFC reader. It looks like the only way to tell that you have a clone is to open up the reader. Wizzle is doing his best to try to fix the issue, but needs to track down the specific clone in order to better diagnose the problem. The clone won't be simple to find since you don't know what you will get until you open up the reader. If you prefer native mobile apps to web apps, then you'll be glad to know that Wizzle released an official app for his remote script to the Android Google Play Store. The app is free, and at the moment, it still requires the remote script to be installed on your Mr. FPGA. An additional iOS app will also be released, but that one's currently having some difficulties, and Wizzle hopes to release it within the next two to three weeks. The mobile app can open up some functionality that's currently not possible on the insecure web app. With a mobile app, you can have things like camera access for scanning barcodes and QR codes, NFC scanning within the mobile app itself instead of relying on an NFC reader, data caching to put less strain on the mister when loading images, network scanning to find other misters on the network, better touch support and accelerometer support, and there's also the possibility of push notifications. These are just some of the things that could be possible with the new mobile app. You can get more info and the link to download the app through Wizzle's Patreon. So that's it for this episode. I provided links to all my sources in the description. Make sure you also check out RetroRGB.com to see my Mr. News videos in blog form and to get more retro related content. And if possible, support them on Patreon too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon so you can get notified of future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.